Ever wanted to drive a Formula One car? Of course you have. For most of us, the closest we'll get is simulators. But if you happen to have six million dollars, then Red Bull's latest project is what you've been dreaming of. So how is the supercar inspired by F1? Plus, how are supercars moving towards all electric power? And why might Mercedes' newest supercar be illegal to drive? Stay tuned, because all of that and more are coming right up. First up, RB17. Most Formula One teams are recognized car brands with sports cars and supercars. McLaren, Mercedes, Ferrari, and Aston Martin all have cars worth millions of dollars. Now, Red Bull wants to get in on the action. Their success in Formula One has led them to develop a new hypercar that will be strongly inspired by their F1 design. What we know about it so far is that it will be fitted with a hybrid V8 engine and 1,100 horsepower. It's going to be designed by their legendary designer, Adrian and Nui, and it's guaranteed to be high-tech. But all of those features are going to set you back around six million dollars. Plus, only 50 of them will be made. For that price tag, though, you'll also get access to Red Bull simulators, training, staff, and maintenance at their Milton Keynes factory. The RB17, as the car will be called, aims to bring the Formula One experience to its customers. It will be the first car to be entirely branded by Red Bull, unlike their first collaboration with Aston Martin to create the Aston Martin Valkyrie sports car. Red Bull Racing CEO Christian Horner said, the RB17 distills everything we know about creating championship winning Formula One cars into a package that delivers extreme levels of performance in a two seat track car. If you're a Red Bull fan, this is a rare chance to buy a piece of Red Bull history. Next, driver's collections. Red Bull might be moving deeper into the supercar market, but what do their drivers have in their garages? It might surprise you what each driver uses as a regular car. Well, let's not say regular. Not many normal people can afford them. Max Verstappen, the reigning world champion, currently drives an Aston Martin DB11. That will set you back more than $400,000 to buy. Aston Martin used to be a partner of Red Bull, and that's what led to the Aston Martin Valkyrie collaboration. And it seems that Verstappen is still doing his share of advertising by driving the iconic brand around when he has the chance. Verstappen's teammate, might surprise you with what he drives. Sergio Perez is much more modest with his current car. He drives a trusty Honda Civic Type R that costs just over $50,000. Honda is still technically the supplier of Red Bull's engines, so he knows that he has power that he can trust. One of the most expensive private cars on the grid belongs to Valtteri Bottas. The former Mercedes man still has one of their cars in his garage. He drives a Mercedes AMG GT Black Series that costs an eye-watering $800,000. And last but not least, we have Lewis Hamilton, a Mercedes man who brings in more than $50 million a year has a car to match. He has a Mercedes AMG One, which is a hybrid sports car that uses a modified engine from its Formula One car. So if you want to feel what it's like to drive like Lewis Hamilton, just drop $2.72 million and the power is yours. The car world today is a very different one from 30 years ago. With the threat of climate change, many car manufacturers have been turning to alternative power rather than fuel. Even in Formula One, the sport aims to have fully sustainable fuel by 2026 and a carbon zero footprint by 2030. So what does this mean for supercars? Well, the top supercars like the McLaren P1 and the LaFerrari already use electric power in their hybrid setups. Now the company Rimac is bringing fully electric models for a luxury customer base. The Rimac Nevera is an all-electric sports car that plans to start delivering to its buyers by the end of this year. Rimac has been brought out by Porsche, who have big plans for the revolutionary electric power that they offer. The founder of the company has said there are no other electric hypercars on the market, so there is no reference point for customers. But we need to do events and get lots of people behind the wheel. But all electric cars are a hot trend at the moment, and the success of Tesla is helping to push things along. Aston Martin is planning to release their first electric car in 2025, but there are concerns about the old customers. Aston Martin executive Lawrence Stroll said, no offense to Tesla, but it's not the same people who buy an Aston Martin. We still have people who want the smell and the noise. Coming up, what made the Mercedes AMG One supercar illegal? And where did Lewis Hamilton take his $5 million collector's car out to drive? So don't go anywhere. Next, McLaren and BMW. Two titans of motorsport are apparently 
currently in talks to develop an electric vehicle that could rival the famous McLaren F1 car. McLaren and BMW are considering collaborating and moving into the electric space together. BMW would take care of the drivetrain with electric motors and batteries, while McLaren would design the chassis. An anonymous source from BMW said to Car Magazine, McLaren impressed us by rethinking the way a modern sports car should be engineered and built. Their fresh approach to the integration of key components is particularly clever. This could be a sign of things to come. With supercars moving to fully electric power as well, the days of petrol might be numbered. Do you prefer the feel of a fuel-powered car? With tightening emissions regulations all over the world, soon you might not have a choice. One of the biggest advocates for climate change in motorsport has been Lewis Hamilton, but he was taking a break from that when he showed off a different car in his collection in the build-up to the British Grand Prix. Hamilton went on a road trip with his dog, Roscoe, and while you and I might take a station wagon or a four-wheel drive, Hamilton opted for something a little classier. He drove his 1966 Shelby Cobra 427, which is worth more than $5.5 million. Apparently, Hamilton called Shelby 10 years ago before buying the car to ask for recommendations. He flaunted the collector's item on Instagram. The car can reach speeds of up to 160 miles per hour, but for a Formula One car, that's nothing. The road trip might have helped to take his mind off the tricky season he's had so far. Mercedes have struggled to adapt to the 2022 regulations and are still playing catch up with Ferrari and Red Bull, but that hasn't stopped Hamilton from believing. After the British Grand Prix, the seven-time world champion said, with a little bit more digging and a little more hard work, hopefully we can get closer to winning a race. So I truly believe we can win a race this year. Hamilton is currently sixth in the championship standings, and his dream of a record-breaking eighth title will probably have to wait until next year. But his team have reportedly solved many of the key issues that have been hampering this year's car. Team boss Toto Wolff said, we're still missing two or three tenths in terms of performance, but we would really like to be there in the fight that Ferrari and Red Bull are having at the front. Mercedes might not be getting any wins on the racetrack, but they are hoping that their supercar, the Mercedes AMG 1, will find more success. The project started in 2016, and it has been a long road. Just like the one that Hamilton has in his garage, the Mercedes AMG 1 will be powered by a 1.6 liter V6 engine. And one of the biggest difficulties was reliability. The leader of the car's development team, Jochen Hermann, said that in some ways the wear on this car will be worse than on a Formula One car. And as we all know, F1 cars have their engines changed and fixed all the time. But this just isn't an option when making a supercar. Hermann has also revealed that they almost pulled the plug numerous times. He said, two or three times we said, you know what, why don't we just stop the project? Give people the money back or make a race car or whatever. But in the end, they persevered. And the project is on track to be delivered by the end of the year. There will be 275 units, costing around $2.7 million each. But unfortunately, there are none left. They hit a speed bump when it was determined that the car would not be legal for public roads in the United States. But Hermann said that most of their customers understood and are passionate about the project. If you have a spare $2.7 million to spend, there's probably not much that would make you angry. If you had the money, which supercar would you choose? Would it be one of the new electric ones? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.